What is going down TikTok? Welcome to another episode of Beyond Sober recorded live here on TikTok. How are you doing? What are you up to? You good? It's been a little while. You got your water. Are you making magic happen? I got a new background. You know why? That's because that's because uh, I'm in a whole new place now. Yeah. <laughs> I've moved twice since I've been here in Nashville and I'm so excited to be in this new location um, I got really cool neighbors, man. Um, I unfortunately am alone. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I was going to go into a team meeting with all of the Beyond Sober coaches. And uh, I'm just a little too on top of things. Paulino, what's up, girl? I'm a little too on top of things. So I'm like going, hey, dude, are we having this meeting right now? And they're like, dude, it's next week. So I was like, well, since I took a nap and prepared to to work with amazing people I might as well take that time that I accidentally created for myself and come hang out with you guys here um, there's been I, I have so many amazing people reaching out to me and uh, and I, I figured that what I would do miss you what I would do is uh, kind of read some of I'm not gonna out anybody but I do want to read some of the messages that I receive um, mainly because I, I've been creating all these personal video responses for everybody. Um, if you guys left me a message and haven't received a custom reply from me, uh, it's because I haven't gotten to it. It takes, it's like five to 10 minutes, every single response, and I gotta find the time. I'm sorry, I gotta make that time. Um, so yeah, we're currently experiencing the worst hangover yet. Good, bro. <laughs> Don't solve that hangover with more liquor. That's actually how I became an alcoholic. If you guys don't know my story, I'm an ex-alcoholic, a liver failure survivor, and the creator of World Famous Beyond Sober program. Um, I don't care about quitting alcohol. I care about helping you become someone that doesn't struggle with alcohol. Um, so a lot of people that I connect with are in situations where they're like, Oh, well, I just I just need to quit drinking. If I could quit drinking, then everything will be good. Well, you got to understand this. Once we stop drinking, we're not a different person. That's the root of everything. Always great to see you. We, we go back to being the person we were before we took the last drink. So there's no there's so many solutions and so many people that go to like just go to AA, just you know, just quit drinking, just just do this, just go to the gym, just do all this stuff. Just removing the toxicity from our lives doesn't change who we are at our core. It doesn't change our programming. Um, answering this question, do you have any signs before liver failure? Um, I lost my house, car, job, money, friends. I was super thick. I was like 200 pounds. It looked obviously unhealthy. My limbs were swollen, super fat face. Um, and then I didn't even go to the hospital until I was bright yellow and throwing up blood. Um, I also developed ascites, so I looked nine months pregnant. I was swelling in the wrists, in the ankle, in the throat. Veins opened up in my throat and I started throwing up blood. Uh, it was banana sandwiches. <laughs> so here's the trip and this kind of full circles. Happy Halloween, Glam Raptor, so good to see you. Um, how can I access your program? I have liver cirrhosis. Dude, beyondsober.org or now you can just click the link in my bio. Drop your information and I'll send everything over to you. I'm encouraging everybody here, couple things. If we haven't connected off of TikTok and you guys would like to have a conversation with me or just stay in the loop with all the things that I'm doing, hit the link in my bio, share your data. I'm not gonna spam you. I reach out and I share a whole bunch of really, really good information, but I also try to make you guys laugh in, in your inbox. Um, but also there's like discounts and new opportunities and, and new resources that are being released. Um, and so there's so many different updates and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So feel free to connect with me with the link in my bio, just share your data. Um, the other thing here is your thumbs can literally save a life. Every single time I go live, I'll be alive a lot more often now. <laughs> um, I say something that somebody needed to hear. They didn't know they needed to hear it. Your thumbs, when you double tap this screen, just like this, you go tap, 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 tap. You don't have to do it the whole time, but it pushes it out to the FYP and it could land on someone's page um, that is seeking support, but didn't know they needed to hear it by some guy that looks like Polly Shore. Um, I have someone in the inbox recently, not gonna say any names, that recently tried to take themselves out um, uh, about a week ago after going on a three day bender. They found me on TikTok or TikTok aligned me with them and now we get a chance to speak. 
that is the power of your thumbs. You can literally save a life by pushing this to the FYP. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with everyone. Uh, so there's, there's just so much that people are struggling with, especially lately. And I'm sending, I'm creating all of this content and I'm reaching out to different people and I'm sending all these personal messages. I'm answering all these questions. I'm building so much in the BSO community and, and online. Um, found you live. What up girl? Hey man, how's the sober life treating you? I'm not sober. To be sober means that I have a problem with alcohol and I'm actively in a state of trying not to drink it. I don't have a problem with alcohol. I'm an ex-alcoholic. Sober doesn't mean anything. Alcoholic doesn't mean anything. Um, sober life, I don't even know what that is. Sober life was like sick after, after, after surviving. Sick was recovery. Um, sober was still thinking about alcohol, still wanting to drink it and still choosing to do something else. I'm not sober. This version of me has never had alcohol before. So how can I have some more of something I've never tasted yet? How can I be something that I've never been? That's the reality with identifying as certain things. So 406 days, hell yeah, dude, you're not sober either. You know why? It's because you're beyond sober. <laughs> There's a place beyond sobriety when you're 406 days since your last drink and you're like, I don't even, I don't even think about that. I forgot I even had a problem, right? A lot of people call themselves alcoholics just because they like to party, because other people call them an alcoholic. There's a video going tr like viral, like if you go out and party every Saturday, you're an alcoholic. Wrong. <laughs> That's not what an alcoholic is. That's what an alcoholic might do but that doesn't make you an alcoholic. Not at all. 60 days sober, hell yeah, dude. So we say this to go like, all right, um, you're 60 days sober. That means that we're still, it's, 60 days is the same as 60 years because sober is sober. That is the absolute truth. You cannot get more sober than sober. You might feel more cognitive, but sober is sober. So sober just means four days, no alcohol. So if you've gone four days, <laughs> Jim Bow, what's up? If you've gone four days, then you and I are the same amount of summer. <laughs> you just didn't have to go through all the like trauma. <laughs> uh, haven't seen you live in a while. I'd love to talk with you. Uh, I'm almost two weeks sober. That's amazing. The most I've got in nine years. Hell yeah. That's incredible. So I'll say this. Um, my calendar has just opened up and I don't offer it to everyone. I'm now offering sobriety coaching. Um, there's people who are actively on my calendar that are going, dude, you're the guy, you're the guy. AA is ridiculous. You're the guy, you know what you're talking about. Therapy is crap. I learn more with you in an hour than I have in all of the meetings I've ever been to. And you're the guy. If anybody feels like I might be that person, I'm now accepting applications. You got to qualify. You got to be up here. So if you want access to my calendar, I have people coming in and applying every single day and I'm really trying to work with the right people, people I know I can get absolute results with. I want you to go ahead and hit apply. There's a link in my bio, you'll see it, it'll say apply, drop your information, everything you need to know is right there. I would love to chat with you, I would love to work with you, um, either inside the Beyond Sober program or with uh, as, a, as your sobriety coach. Sobriety coaching is not the same as a sponsor. It's nothing like AA, it's nothing familiar. It, it is a totally different world. Um, expect some tears, expect a lot of epiphanies and expect the absolute truth because the way I speak and the way I communicate is from the mind of an alcoholic who has worked so far through their sobriety that they're now able to identify exactly where someone's struggling and put in very specific actions to help them recover from those little things that add up to the big, beautiful life that they actually love to live. I'm zero days without alcohol, but I find myself consuming less and less, just not in the mood for it. Dude, that's amazing. I want you to remember this. Can I sign up for both? You absolutely can. So I'll, I, I'm not gonna flip this around, but I got a ton of messages in my inbox right now um, and I'm going to read some of these. Someone just came in just now. Um, and yes, you can. So you can actually do Beyond Sober at your own pace. You have a lifetime access or now it's a monthly membership. You got 20 bucks. You have access to the entire program. 
or if you wanna unlock it for life, there's an opportunity for that too. So you can take Beyond Sober online. It's not just about alcohol. It's not just about drugs. It's not just about food. It's about this. It's about who you are. Once again, I don't care about alcohol. I don't care about what the symptoms are. You know how to fix those symptoms. It's either more alcohol or Advil. Like that's it. Or quit drinking. <laughs> so we want to actively start growing and that's what Beyond Sober is going to help you do. It's going to help you move from a place that you don't prefer and become someone that would never struggle in that way ever again. Um, I don't know if I'm an alcoholic, but I drink often and was making bad life choices. What do you think? That's alcohol, man. That's what you get. <laughs> Gabe, you got to remember this. Alcohol lowers our inhibition. Our inhibitions are our boundaries, okay? I didn't want to drunk drive, but I was drunk. If I wasn't drinking, I wouldn't have driven drunk. You know what I'm saying? Like, but because I was faded, I decided to, you know, I'll just go rob the liquor store. <laughs> That's alcohol talking, man. That is what it does. Now, it depends on your mental health too, because not every person that drinks alcohol wants to go rob a liquor store. Um, or get in a fight or be angry, but it does give us permission to act on our emotions. This is where a lot of DV comes in. This is where a lot of apologies, unsaid and definitely unheard apologies are, are written. <laughs> I, I did it because I was drinking. Well, you know what? Stop it. <laughs> if only it was that easy, right? Um, and did you see what just happened? I, I don't know what that is. Um, I can't get past anxiety and my panic attacks to stop. Uh, fell off the wagon two months, was sober for 10 months. Is that, is that, I think that what that means. Um, <laughs> that's good. I want to read that again. Can't get past anxiety. Got it. You're not supposed to get past anxiety. You want to get through it. Uh, the reality is, is if you're sober and you still have anxiety, that is your body excited to not be being poisoned anymore. Your body and your mind has the same physiological reactions to excitement as it does anxiety. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Was it Justin Timberlake? <laughs> oh my God, still. It's, no, it's my mother. <laughs> the point is, is that your brain is gonna give you the exact same physical and emotional symptoms regardless of the circumstances, right? Your nervous system, nervous, right? That's anxiety. That's why I drank is because of social anxiety. I drank because I couldn't go anywhere and not feel nervous. I couldn't not feel those feelings. And to drink means to ignore all the things that were getting my attention. So everybody that's struggling, I don't care whether it's you or someone you know or a family member, whatever, they don't drink because they don't care. They drink because they really care and they don't want to. That's the absolute truth when it comes to anyone struggling with alcohol. I care so much, it's unbearable. It's unbearable and the only way that I can literally function is to do the only thing I know how to do, which is the quickest route to peace, which is the illusion that I'm not having those thoughts. You are having those thoughts and you are feeling those feelings, you're just numb. This brings up a whole other topic. Just because you're numb doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It means you can't perceive the amount of pain that you're in. This is why there's no permanent solution, <laughs> permanent numbing remedy. We have to feel, we must feel. It's a part of the human condition. Like the closest to not feeling, you're still feeling. I, when I died, I still felt peace. Like that was an actual state of being that I was in. I was still feeling something even though I wasn't human at that point. That's really interesting, it's all perspective. It is all so ingrained that we're not supposed to feel bad things. Dude, my family just had to move back to Canada, man. Like, I'm not allowed to go to Canada and she's, she's not allowed to stay here. So she had to go back, man. You think that doesn't hurt? It's supposed to hurt because I care. I care and it matters. And I want the pain to remind me of how much love I have, not how bad it feels. It's so worth it, man. But then I'm not trying to escape that pain, man. <laughs> I'm also, I'm not running towards it. 
but I'm also not trying to avoid it. I wake up every morning, dude, and I meditate. 5.15 a.m., 5.15, mirrored numbers. I wake up at 5.15 and I'm meditating within the first 10 minutes for 25 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Drink your water, y'all. And I'm allowing these thoughts to move through me. I'm embracing the emotions. I'm having conversations with my younger self. I'm having conversations with my future self. And that is allowing the human aspect to exist. We're not supposed to not feel because if we can't feel, we're just not human. Um, your understanding of this beyond anything taught in university. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that, man. That, this, I, I really do appreciate that. It is sick. I'm a master coach. So to master anything means that you, you put in at least 10,000 hours in deliberate, not just study, but practice. So I've spent years breaking apart the thoughts, feelings, and actions of those with low mental health as it's fueled by alcohol. And then I've practiced delivering my understandings in as simple as a way as possible without boring everybody with all the science and all that stuff. Um, so we could start to understand like, we are the strength, we are the power. <laughs> Radog is in the building, what up dude? So stoked to see you, man. Hey, I gotta say this, I do like this. These floating shelves, I like it a lot. <laughs> um, uh, where you been? I, I've, been, I've been wrapped up with my family, man. So I spent the last like two months, I moved to Nashville, August 1st. <clears throat> I did a year in Arizona and that was just me in a room and that's where you guys saw me go live for so long for a year I was going live almost every day in Arizona in a room by myself then I moved to Nashville and I got this beautiful three-bedroom apartment in preparation for Brienne and Joey to to come potentially move permanently here to the US until I could get to Canada <clears throat> and uh, is gaggy normal? No, we'll talk about that in a second. And so the last two months has been me taking a step back from going live and taking that time to really invest in the love I have for both Brianne and Joey. So an hour hanging out with you guys is an hour playing with trucks. <laughs> it's an hour going for a walk and doing all these beautiful things that really help shape me into the humble human that I feel today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So since they had to go back, I have some extra time, some extra energy, and I wanna give that back to you. Happiness is only real when shared, and I'm here to share my happiness with you and help you generate as much happiness as possible so you can share it with others. Um, Vicky, so much love. So check it out, Gabe, is gagging normal? <laughs> um, no, holy crap, you had a year free today? Started with your program a year ago? Dude, that's badass! Proof that Beyond Sober works, man. It is, you are, you are Beyond Sober. Like, you're not, it's not just a destination, but the reason Beyond Sober exists is because people keep reaching beyond their sobriety. A year without even touching the poison, man. Dude, that's Beyond Sober stuff. Like, you probably don't even have a problem. <laughs> you're definitely not sitting here going, you know what, dude, if only I could drink alcohol, you know, it's, it's been 365 days. <laughs> you're not like that. It's because you're a better person, a better human. You're a good human doing good things for you. A book, yes, I'm on chapter three editing. I'm trying to keep my ADHD unlocked. Um, the, Beyond, the official Beyond Sober book will probably be out in a month or so. So definitely, if you guys are even interested in the official Beyond Sober book, um, definitely leave me your information. Connect with me, link in my bio, share your data where it says, honestly, is there anything that I could support you with? I want you to say, hey man, send me the book when it's ready or ask me a question and I will make sure that I reach out to you as soon as the Beyond Sober book is available. You'll be the first to get it. Um, so yeah, so that's where we're at. Happiness is only real when shared, so I'm giving it back to you guys. So you will see a lot more of me, uh, which means you'll there'll be a lot more episodes on the Beyond Sober podcast. So you can go to beyondsoberpodcast.com or jump on Spotify and just type in Beyond Sober, you'll see it. Uh, Jim Pendia, <laughs> I love that name, man. I'll send you a book, I got you covered. <clears throat> In the trenches, y'all, keep up the fight, excited to, uh, to get sober. It only takes four days to be medically considered sober. 
Damn, I haven't spoken this much in a while. Please excuse me as I warm up my vocalizer. <laughs> um, I'm all over the place and I'm trying to cater to as many of these things. Yes, Beyond Sober is one of the most powerful sobriety programs on planet Earth. There is literally nothing like it. There's one other program that I know of that is like it. Um, that is the Magnify Method. That's by Maggie Jensen. Um, she is actually a, a sobriety coach in, as an extension of Beyond Sober, but she has a massive platform uh, that is just so amazing. It's fitness, it's nutrition, it is mindset, it's sobriety. It is super duper duper cool. Magnify Method. And that will be officially, officially launched off the website in the next few days or so. Drink last night after two months. Yup, dude, you're still sober. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with you, Bobby Dog. What are you talking about? Who cares? Why does that matter? Why does it? Why? Do, listen to me. Why does that matter? Why are you beating yourself up and putting yourself in an emotional state to start the fucking cycle again? Oh my God, I can't believe I drank last night. I'm so ashamed and guilty and I feel like shit. And why? And I thought in this that I had all these expectations. What did you think was going to happen, dude? What did you think was going to happen? Did you think you were going to go 100 days? At least it was only, what, 20 days? It could have been 200 days. Like, what is the actual difference? What do you think is going to unlock on 21 days that you didn't already achieve in 20 days. You didn't relapse, dude. No one's hating on you. It literally doesn't matter. You decided to drink. Now, if you hurt yourself or you binged out and you ended up in the hospital and now you're like massively addicted and now there's like major repercussions, then we've got some things to worry about. But dude, you know there's more people that drink every single day of their life and will to the day they die and don't have a problem with that and are also not alcoholics. That's casual drinking. That's what alcohol is for. <laughs> it's what it's for. You're supposed to casually consume it. Nobody's gonna kick the door down and go, hey, Bobby Dog, tell you what, man, I, I, I told you, I told you. I got my truck out back, dude. I said if you drink, man, we're gonna, go ha we're gonna have some fun, right? That's not happening, dude, by anyone else. You are doing that to yourself which is giving you another reason to want to drink. What you're doing is you're putting yourself in an AA room. That's what that is. You've created the room of AA and everyone is sharing their stories and you're starting to feel bad about your decision. You know what, dude? That was the best you had at the time. That was the best you had. If you could have landed on any other decision, if it was possible, you would have, but you didn't. There's nothing wrong with that because you were operating at your finest when you made that decision. There's nothing wrong with that. There's how you feel about your own actions, which deep down you knew it was gonna happen and the way you want to perceive that information. You can perceive it the way that I see it and go like, hell yeah, bro, let's do it again. You're still sober. You didn't lose your sobriety. You're not back to day one. What are you, what are we talking about? You think, like what action, did you lose a limb? Is that what happened? Like you drank and then like a, a pinky fell off? Like that would be sad, man. <laughs> that would be horrible. But on that same note, what did you gain? Did you grow a tail? At day? What did you think was going to happen with one extra day? Nothing, dude, nothing. And you know why? Here's the truth with this, is not drinking alcohol doesn't change who you are. So if you're not actively using your sobriety to improve your quality of life, you're just not drinking. If you're not using your state of sobriety to actively improve your quality of life, then you're not getting better. You're just not drinking. There's nothing wrong with that if you don't have a problem with who you are. <laughs> but if you feel like who you are is the reason why you can't stop, won't stop, or it's impossible, then we need to focus on becoming someone that knows that they're in control, that takes aggressive action in the opposite direction. Because any direction that isn't in the direction of alcohol is the right direction. 
which is infinite directions because alcohol was one thing. It's one thing that feels like our whole world. <laughs> it's trippy. And the unfortunate part about that is when we drink enough alcohol, we feel like our entire world is conditioned around someone else's thoughts. 41 days. Dude, that's badass, man. Can it be chemical imbalance? Alcoholism isn't necessarily a, well, <laughs> alcoholism, the actual, like, the, we're going to say the structure that drives uh, addictive behavior, that is an imbalance. That's a whole lot of stuff out of whack. That's an actual dependency on a poison. A chemical imbalance is what I have. I still got a chemical imbalance. You know why? Because I got ADHD, dude. I didn't find out I had ADHD until after I survived liver failure. How did, how, what? What do you mean that every drink I took, I was just chasing dopamine? Yeah, I have ADHD. I have irregular dopamine regulation. <laughs> My dopamine doesn't show up when it would normally, normally would. And then the thought of drinking alcohol would release enough dopamine and I go like, it's a good decision because it makes me happy. And then I do that shit and then I can't stop because once I start that shit, I think the next drink is going to bring the same amount of dopamine and it doesn't, but I don't care at that point because I'm drinking. And then I think the next one is going to be just as exciting and then it's a double shot and it's a triple shot and what happened to yesterday? That is a chemical imbalance. Your hormones have absolutely everything to do with how you feel. It controls your state of being controls the way you think about your moments, right? So I'll say this. So everyone's state of being is different right now. Everybody here, right? <laughs> everyone's state of being is different. It's yours. It's yours. No one can take it from you, but you can give it away. So if you're in a happy, healthy state of being, you're in a state of reception, you're in a state of positivity or optimism or excitement. <clears throat> You're going to listen to what I'm saying and go like, yep, 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 I, 100%, right? I agree. Then if you're not in that state of being and you're victimizing yourself or you're a little depressed or your anxiety is kicking your ass, you're going to go like, oh, yeah, I know, fuck. Every time, oh, I hate being reminded of the truth and oh, I just, I just, oh, I, you just drink. So your state of being determines your thoughts. So this is why <laughs> when we remove the state of being of intoxication, the false illusion of happiness and peace and joy and no problems and all that stuff. When we remove that, we go back to what's considered normality, truth, the real world, the way, it, not the way you perceive it, the real world where nothing is entertaining, nothing is boring, you are. When you get back there, you're looking at this information and going, damn, I know why I started drinking. <laughs> and then we want to blame the world. It's society's fault. It's politics. It's my mom. It's, it's, it's my childhood. It's my trauma. It's the PTSD. It's the government. It's this, all these things. If we keep focusing on all these things, then all we're doing is looking for reasons to escape a feeling. Well, it's, if it's not this guy, it's that guy, right? <laughs> if it's not that over there, it's this over here. And we're constantly seeking this information that will be the catalyst to us taking that first sip because that's what we really want to do. That's what we really want to do. We don't want to drink. We want peace. That's it. That's all we want. I also want that. And I don't drink. All we're seeking is peace and understanding. And oh, thank you for the subscription. I sincerely appreciate you guys. Thank you. Well, the more subscribers that we have here, the more like people I know are like really excited for me to be here. I, I guess they just started this thing. I don't even understand it, but if you guys would like to subscribe, then I will continue showing up for everybody who's here. Obviously, I'd love to have 100, question mark? I don't, I don't even know. I'm just here to help you guys out, help myself out. <laughs> Been drinking all day, not good. Well, drinking all day, you could sip all day long and not have a problem, man. Hello, everyone, what's up? Um, it's depressing uh, not to be able to drink. I think uh, it's all wrong, I gotta stop. It's depressing not being able to drink. No, that's not the reality. The reality is it's depressing not having anything else to look forward to. It's not depressing not being able to drink. It's depressing because there's nothing else to look forward to. That's the reality. 
It has nothing to do with alcohol. It has everything to do with you, how you perceive, how you see, how you feel. Alcohol is just a fluid. With it, like it, it, if, if you never touched it, there would be no difference. Alcohol needs you, you don't need alcohol. So the point is, is that you're like, oh, it's really just depressing that one mile smile is so depressing that I can't drink. Well, what's the opposite of depressing? Excited? Like what is the opposite of depressed? <laughs> that, so you see, until you get excited about you, until you ex get excited about what you're doing, until you get excited about who you are, until you get excited about where you're going, you're always going to be depressed that you can't do the one thing that's hurting you the most. That's Stockholm Syndrome. You're in love with your violator. You're in love with the one that kidnapped your mind. The thing that abused you the most. The reason you're depressed. That's what we're depressed about. Like, this is absolute Martha fucking truth. It has literally stolen every single happy thought and possibility. Your dreams, impossible to reach if you're under the influence of a narcissist. That narcissist, which is alcohol, does not want you to move forward. It doesn't want you to grow. It doesn't want you to outgrow them. It needs you to need them. It, you have to. If you don't need them, you serve no purpose. That's the power of alcohol. That's the bullshit. That's the absolute fact that, that we, we feel imprisoned and enslaved to. You've been robbed of your dreams. You've been robbed of possibilities. I know this because I did this too. I did this for years. And then the trippy part about it is I go like, well, I know you, I know you, I know you robbed me of my dreams, but at least you make me feel better about that. I know you robbed me of my dreams, but you make me feel better about that. Is this shameful to be drinking and listen to you? No, bro, that's superhero work. I want you to remember this. I'm not speaking to the intoxicated version of you. I'm speaking to the person beneath the drink. The person you're drinking to experience, brother, the person, not the one pulling on the bottle, not the one drinking. I'm talking about the person that's watching you pull that liquor. The one that's watching you and experiencing you hurt yourself. That's who I'm talking to. So I think feel, believe, and know that it is straight up one of the most powerful things you could ever possibly do is listen to me and drink at the same time. Do I encourage it? No. <laughs> but here's a neurological fact, and this is what I teach. Whatever you pra practice when you're drinking, you can master when you're not. This is why I, Mike, Mike's like, dude, I bought your program, dude. I got into Beyond Sober, blacked out drunk and didn't log in for three months. Then it changed my life, man. And that's because he, when he got there, when he bought the program, when he became an official BSO member, he was blacked out of his mind. But there was a portion of him, that guiding force, the one that is that we're drinking to experience. Every pull on that bottle, every sip of that beer, every pull on that cocktail is is helping us feel like we're reaching a version of us that's inaccessible without alcohol. That version of him is the one that decided to unlock the official program. And he sat on that for months. And then he became, he graduated. <laughs> he graduated in like six weeks or something like that. He is far beyond sober, dude. Far beyond sober. We don't even hear from him anymore. He's doing so well. That's the beautiful part about this. So if you're drinking and listening to me, this is me speaking to the version of yourself that actually is capable of receiving this information. It may strike a chord right here and it may make you want to drink, but at least you're drinking with intent. At least you're drinking with new knowledge, drinking with new purpose, drinking with a new feeling. It's that feeling that you're going to use eventually to practice drinking less. And you're gonna start finding yourself in a position where you feel more empowered, more excited, happier about your existence, 
happier about your progress, not disappointed that it's not working as well as you thought. That's what I'm saying. You're happy about your progress, not disappointed with how little you're moving forward. Any progress is better than no progress. <laughs> Right? What causes uh, dry gagging after drinking for days? Bro, your machine is done. Listen to what I'm saying. You see how earlier, <clears throat> water, I'm gonna have to get more. How I've just been speaking, just speaking, <coughs> just talking, <clears throat> my throat is messed up. <laughs> what do you think putting acid in your throat is gonna do? Putting like actual beer and yeast and carbonation and juices and in, in a little poison. What do you think's gonna happen? Do you really think that you're gonna be just fine? You think alcohol is designed to improve your machine? Your body is done, man. Like your machine is like, dude, we've had enough. You, here's the crazy part, and I didn't learn this for years because I didn't practice the communication. Your machine, your body, knows way more about you than you know about it. It is doing things that you can't even possibly imagine, dude. It's literally bathing itself in fluids while you sleep. It's taking a bath while you're dreaming about puppies. It's, it's doing so much, dude. There are bugs on your eyelashes, man. You have no idea what's happening. And then we sit here and go like, you know what, I'm unstoppable because I'm human. I've survived everything that's ever happened to me. I could survive another shot, another shot, another shot. I know it's bad for me, but I don't care. And shot and shot and shot and shot and my throat hurts now. What the? Dude, you go play with kids long enough, you're going to get sick. You drink alcohol long enough, you're going to get sick, dude. It doesn't matter what it is. One of those things is actually going to improve your immune system, where the other is going to deplete it. If your throat is starting to scratch, if it's starting to, to, to really start to make sense that yeah, maybe something's going sideways, my eyes started bleeding and I swallowed three or four stomachfuls of blood. And that's how I got alcohol. I got blood poisoning by swallowing too much of my own blood in my sleep. When my brain would ba was bathing itself, attempting to heal me, my throat had opened up two veins and I was in my sleep and filling with blood, dude. And then I woke up because my body knew before I did that something was wrong. I got sick and then I went to the restroom, dude, didn't even make it. Blah! Murder scene all over the walls, dude. Like it was, it was it, it, ridiculous. Someone else had to clean it up. I feel very bad for them. Bugs on your eyelashes. Yeah, dude, they are. They're right there. Can you see them? <laughs> Drinking is not an intelligent way to escape from problems. We don't want to escape from any problems. We're not supposed... You actually don't have problems. You just don't like the way you feel about that. You don't have problems. You just don't like the way you feel about that thing. That's it. What is a problem? A problem is something that is so far outside your control that you, you just have to deal with it. Really think about this. What is a problem? Something that is outside your control and is negatively affecting you. If it's outside your control, why are we dramatically upset about this information? We can't control it anyway. But we create problems. I don't like what she said. We'll stop thinking that way. But I can't. Well, you're upset that you can't stop thinking that way. But she said, no one cares. It's a perspective. None of these things are important. We don't have to react that way. We don't have to feel that way. We practice this. And then we go, damn, I'm so good at being pissed. I don't know how to be happy. Well, that's, that's what we practice. We practice seeing problems. More importantly, we're encouraged over time to look for problems so we have some type of purpose. If you know what problems need to be fixed, then you could be the hero of anyone's story, right? And if you don't have any problems, <laughs> there's something wrong with you. This is the human condition, man. We're all taught to seek pain and struggle and overcomplicate things that don't need to be complicated. This is why a lot of people go like, oh, am I supposed to meditate now? That's boring. Healthy is, is not boring. Doing healthy things is not boring, dude. You're boring. <laughs>
You can't go play with bugs. The bugs on your eyelashes. Go play with bugs. You know how, this is why I loved having Joey around. Because, <laughs> God, I wish I could record this. It is recorded. It's actually, this will be on the Beyond Silver podcast. So you go to beyondsilverpodcast.com and play it. <clears throat> or you can look at uh, Beyond Silver on Spotify. But that was a whole trip, man. Is Joey, he's three years old. Just turned three. He turned th- three on the 12th. And, dude, I was out there when he was, like, playing with roly-polies for his first time. What is that? I'm like, it's a roly-poly, dude. He's like, it's a roly-poly? Like, bro, yeah, dude, roly-poly. Don't squish it. And then an ant rolls up, and then we're like, oh, like, it's a family. And, dude, bugs, so badass. But that's, like, people look at that and go, like, that's stupid. Who the hell taught you that that was stupid? And at what point of your life did you think that playing with bugs was inappropriate. What are you, an adult? You're, you're pretty happy as that adult there? <laughs> Maybe if you play with a little bit more bugs, the bugs on your eyelashes, you would be under less stress and giving yourself less reason to drink. But, but, but shut the front door. <laughs> Either you want to practice thinking the opposite and feeling the opposite, or you want to practice managing where you are. We think that because we have everything handled, because we got this and pain management here, I'll take some Advil, I'll take another, sh- uh, another shot. I'll just ignore that person or I'll avoid or I'll people please or I'll just like go over the top and I'll be like on top of this OCD. If I do all of these things, I will express less pain. Pain's coming, dude. (laughs) Whether you like it or not, it's on the way. Potato bugs. Yeah, it's on the way. Food doesn't taste good anymore. Yeah, I, bro, I understand that. And that's because your, your taste buds, keep on, I couldn't even eat food. Unless I had a couple shots first. I didn't even have a diet, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't have a uh, a palate. Like, I didn't even have a, what is that called? An appetite. I didn't have an appetite unless I ate. Oh, I'm sorry, unless I took a couple shots. But here's the crazy part, dude. A couple of different things happened to me is because I listened to so much music, I forgot how to listen to it. I could only enjoy music if I was drinking. I could only enjoy food if I was drinking. I could only enjoy people and myself if I was drinking. Now, my greatest, most kick-ass thing that I do is make like ginger rice. (laughs) I had it yesterday, man. I I cook for myself morning, noon, and night. It's it's just me. And then when Brianne was here and Joy was here, I was cooking for her three times a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, man. Cooking, 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 cooking. I love this. And that's because I got my taste buds back, man. I'm not numb to these things. Give me some extra spice. I want to feel like my mouth has been spanked. (laughs) Spank my mouth with spices. I love it, right? But I've also developed not, I didn't just wake up and like want to cook. I've been, I was like, I was in the kitchen and I was like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Just anxiety. I don't have a, I don't have anything. There's no regimen here. I don't know what I'm doing. Am I overcooking? Is there too much time? Am I thinking too much? All this stuff. That's over processing. <laughs> but then now I just bought new knives. I'm like, cut these things up, man. I'm super excited. I'm not a chef, but I enjoy cooking now. That's the same exact practice that I put into cutting ginger and getting the flow of the knife, holding it right, flow of the knife, is the same amount of attention that I put into doing my dishes, that I put into feeling my feelings, that I put into taking care of my machine. I was in the gym today. All of these things. (laughs) How did I, (laughs) how do I suppress my bug spheres so I can play with them? Um, They're not out to hurt you. (laughs) Brienne, oh my goodness. I was just talking about you. What's up, baby? Okay, brand mass 2.0 in the building. Oh my goodness gracious. I was just talking about Nashville, how much I love you, how I cooked you three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and how I just loved feeding you. That was one of the coolest things. That's, that's really one of the coolest things is that I would wake her up and I'd give her her Thrive Nutrition and bring her water. And then I'd say like, hey girl, what do you want to eat? And she's like, I want eggs or I want a sandwich or I want a grilled cheese, egg, blah, 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 or whatever. And then I would make that and then we would chill and drink our water and have morning conversation, drink our coffee and, and eating became like an actual thing. But then on top of that, man, her reactions when I made something <laughs> was like the best, dude. She's like, oh my God. And I'm sitting here in my mind going like, I hope it's not too spicy. I hope this, that and the other. And then I had to practice 
not breaking my food apart and not trying to find reasons why it could be better and what I'll do next time. I just want to, you know, enjoy the meal with her. So stepping away from the actual, <laughs> it was delicious. I don't, you look so good eating it too. Stepping away from the analytics and the practicality of the ingredients and then really just like finding joy in it and going like, ah, what's a little extra salt? <laughs> what's a little extra spice? Then there's times where it's like a little too much. Okay, pull back. Like, you know, but the point is, is it's a process, but I never would have gotten there had I not given myself permission to have anxiety for a little bit, to not, to, to, to stress out on something that I, I care about. I care about eating food. I care about eating healthy. I care about feeding Brienne. I care about feeding Joey. So the anxiety and the stress is expected and worth it. That anxiety and stress is necessary and beautiful. That's how I learn what doesn't work for me. And this is the truth. Like now that I'm at the new place, which is just gorgeous, um, the kitchen is set up totally differently. So it's set up the way that I turn around, the way I move my body, the way I do things. I turn around and there's the thing that I would normally put there and I have the dishes over here because that's the way I turn. It's all in flow with what makes sense to me based on how I like to move around the kitchen. How do I do this? Because there's no one way. And if I want to flail a knife around, I want to be in this corner. <laughs> uh, dude, Jamie Ryder, I was just thinking about you, dude. What's up, bro? Literally, I was thinking about you today. Because I keep catching your emails. I'm like, dang, this blow is, bro is blowing up. If you guys see Jamie Ryder right here, not only is he an incredible human being, dude, out there in Australia, um, but he literally changes lives on levels that I would never touch, man. He's just the absolute best. He's got his own programs. Um, he's got the Phoenix program. I just got an email from him saying that he made it so much more affordable. Brother, I just made Beyond Sober more affordable too. So we're at same line, man. We wanna make sure that people have access to the resources that they need to move forward. And we don't want people to look at their finances and go, oh, I'm broken forever because I can't afford it right now or it's, it's too expensive or whatever. So Jamie Ryder is the type of guy that packs an insane amount of value into very large, very humbled, very truthful, and just heartfelt conversations and programs and, and changes lives literally every day, man. So I'm so stoked to see you in here, bro. <laughs> um, hang on. So I was going back here. Um, I got to scroll through this because I saw that you caught my attention a few times. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where to go? Okay, being an executive chef and culinary consultant in Albuquerque did not help for my alcohol, <laughs> bro. I know, man. Um, I, I, there's a lot of people that I know, a lot of chefs, a lot of uh, restaurant owners struggle with alcohol. Um, here's a question. I just thought of this. Do do we struggle with alcohol or do we struggle with sobriety? There's a difference. <laughs> like there is a, is a difference. Starting sobriety tomorrow. Technically, you've started it today because you're you're here. You're here. You're already you've already begun. We do not want to train ourselves to think that tomorrow is the day because if you practice that, guess what tomorrow is going to be? The same day you say tomorrow. Dude, you've already started your sobriety journey. You're already stepping into sobriety because you just said it. You made it true. Say it again. You're on a sobriety journey. You can still drink and be on your sobriety journey. Yeah, both and. You could be faded and getting sober at the same time. You have to be faded in order to get sober. You have to be pissed in order to find relief. You get it? So, Shawnee, I want you to remember this. You are already working on your sobriety, even if you're drinking today. The truth is, is that we don't wanna set these dates like that and go like, on this day, this is gonna happen. Unless it's like personal growth and regimen stuff, like I'm going to the gym, I'm eating these things, I'm meditating, I'm doing whatever I gotta do. But when it comes down to sobriety, we're not trying to go like, oh, I said no to alcohol today, gold star. It's, you said yes to everything else, hell yeah. So the way we look at this stuff is very, very important. And that this is positive reinforcement, man. I struggle with sobriety. Okay, good. So look, 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 look. This is, this is, Perfect, one mile smile. Dude, thank you so much for swinging through. Um, so struggling with sobriety is different than struggling with alcohol, right? It's easy to drink alcohol. Do you really have a, an alcohol problem? Or do you have a sobriety issue? This is, this is the thing, this is the truth. 
This is what they don't want you to know, man. This is why Beyond Sober is so powerful. It's because most people struggle in their sobriety. If sobriety was easy, it wouldn't even be a thing. Struggling with sobriety basically indicates that you tend to gravitate towards alcohol. That's not an alcohol problem. That's a sobriety issue. It means that the state of mind that you find yourself in while not drinking is less preferable than the state of mind that you believe you're in when you are drinking. Alcohol is easy. Sobriety is the difficult part. That's where the struggle comes in. And that's why we really want to look at these things and go like, what is it that you're doing once you've reached that state of sobriety? Once, you've, once you're sober, four days, once you're four days, no alcohol, and you're 100% sober, where do you see yourself? Where do you find yourself? Not what do you do? Like, who are you at that point? Are you someone that thinks about alcohol and misses it? And it's like a friend and you're upset that you can't have it. Are you beating yourself up? Are you, are you like, what is it? Because that's who you are at this point. At that point, that's who you are. If you were another version of yourself, you wouldn't find yourself in that state. This is why once you get there, it is so important to pay attention to what you don't like, but not punish yourself for not liking it. Understood? It's imperative that you understand what you don't like, but not punish yourself with alcohol for not liking it, right? Never been to therapy. Therapy will help you figure out the why you drink things. So tell me about your childhood. <laughs> well, you grew up in an abusive home, right? A lot of trauma. Like, they don't, okay. There's a difference between like the sobri uh, like therapy and coaching. I love therapists, man. They're so amazing. But I've never met a therapist that used to be an alcoholic, that used to be addicted to drugs, that you, no, they're not gonna certify your ass. <laughs> you can't get a certificate in that shit. That's why Beyond Sober is on a whole different level. It's because you, you're not gonna get this information by a therapist. You're not gonna get it in AA. They're not gonna teach this shit to you in smart recovery. You'll get it in Magnify Method. You'll get it in Jamie Ryder's program. You'll get it in my program and all my other programs. There's a truth behind the human condition. And it's not just, oh, the society, it's not just what you believe. It's what you don't believe. Reality is all about what you don't believe. I'm gonna let this sink in for one, for just one second. I get in police today. Reality is all about what you don't believe. Because what you do believe dictates how you perceive what reality is. So if a majority of what you believe about yourself or about society or about the world is not true, then what does that say about what you don't believe? Because there is a truth, there is an absolute and unfuckwittable about reality your perception about the world, about me, about you, about all this stuff, that is true, that you might not even see. And until you see that, you're going to struggle. Absolute. Because you're going to continuously look for the things that facilitate the environment that makes all of those beliefs true. <laughs> even though they're not. They might feel true. They might be real to you. But there's a... It's, it, it's not. It is not. Hey, bro, what's up? Big bro, what's going on? How, um, how long have you been sober? Are your numbers green now? I don't even know what that means. Um, I haven't consumed alcohol in over five years. Um, I am not sober because I don't have a problem with alcohol. I am beyond sober. Um, what else? I'm not an alcoholic. I'm an ex-alcoholic. And I only use those labels because people think they're important. <laughs> they're not. Boredom is the worst. Being bored is the worst. You understand that boredom is an onset thing. You did that. You, it's your fault. You're, you're, I, you're not bored because I'm boring. You're bored because you're bored. What is nothing happening? Do something. <laughs> you struggling to be entertained? Well, you got to practice entertaining yourself. You, like people, the circus could show up and you're like, this is so boring. Why is it boring? Because you're not allowing yourself to be entertained. You're not allowing yourself to find joy. Are you entertained? It's your fault. <laughs> you did that. Congratulations. Wow. You're fucking happy. That's also your fault. Are you miserable? You did that. 
right? You may have feel victimized, but what you didn't change, you've chosen. And so now we gotta make new decisions so we can choose new things that are actually good for us. Please respond to the people. That's all I've been doing. Oh my goodness. So is there something specific you'd like for me to respond to? Because there's like 500 comments. Um, I wanna try your method, I'm scared. What method? <laughs> um, there's, I, don't, I don't have a method. Um, the method is allowing yourself to grow into someone that's incapable of having that problem. I will never, ever, 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 ever have a problem with alcohol, ever. Not even close, not even a little bit. Even if I were to drink alcohol, I would not have a problem. That's the method, is giving yourself permission to become someone better. Not just joining a program and quitting drinking and thinking that it, it ends there. It begins there. Your entire existence begins once you realize that you're the one pulling the levers. You're the one in control. You're the one making the magic happen. Magic doesn't happen to you. You're the one experiencing the magic. You're looking at, you think of a magician. It feels magical. It's identified as magic. It's the feeling that we're thinking, how the hell did that happen? You gotta allow yourself to impress yourself. You have to allow yourself to become more than someone that identifies as broken, as traumatized forever, as someone that can't heal, as someone that won't heal, as, you see what I'm saying? Until, you gotta think about this, man. Your brain doesn't know the difference between a thought and reality. So when you say, I can't, it goes, oh, I, I know, I know you can't. I know for a fact you can't because that's all you say. But anything that comes after the words I am, your brain is also going to find reasons why that's true. So I am recovering. I am moving forward. I am successful. I am sober. When you say these things, your brain is gonna find reasons why that is absolutely correct. It has to be correct. It's in your brain now, it's in your mind, right? You could analytically break this stuff down, but your subconscious isn't practicing analytical studies. It's in here going, this is how we do things. That's programming. That's where our, our belief systems are so imperative that we redesign and redevelop them into something that actually works for us instead of against us. Cody, can you explain uh, relapsing, please? Absolutely. So there's, a, this is a huge one. I've, I've gone viral for this. Nothing magical. It's just that <clears throat> there are certain programs out there that want you to basically punish yourself for not being better. <laughs> so what happens is people believe that just because you drank after X amount of days that you've relapsed. Um, or that you've used after a certain amount of days that you've relapsed. That's, that's not true. That's not what that is. A lapse in your sobriety is not the same as a relapse in an addiction. So to break that down, to relapse, first off, you have to be addicted. You have to have a dependency. You have to be like emotionally or physically entangled with a substance or a person or a chemical or a hormone or whatever it is. You have to be like in the sauce, in the thick of it. If you're not addicted, you can't relapse. Facts, if, you're, if you drink a lot of alcohol and you're not addicted to it and you're on your sobriety journey and you drink, you didn't relapse, okay? There's a lapse in sobriety, which means, oh dude, I got really hard after 30 days, something happened, I drank, that's a lapse. A lapse is a certain amount of time and then there's a hiccup. And then what happens after this? The bump in the road? The road keeps going. You are right back to being 100% sober. You're back to being the same amount of sober as you were before you had a drink after 20, 30 days, 200 days, doesn't matter. This is why you can't lose sobriety. So what happens is we're all taught, even me, and conditioned to go like, oh dude, you didn't go long enough. You didn't break it, all right? There's something wrong with you, man. You gotta go to AA. You gotta go to rehab, man, detox, bro. You gotta get them pills, Nexeltron, Baclavan, all this shit. You got, like, we think that the longer we're not drinking, the better we're getting. This is not true. There might be some shifts in your biology a little bit, the physiological 
attributes of your system may improve, but you're not different. That is the truth. You're not different. This is why 30 days or 300 days guarantees absolutely nothing. If the, anything, if, if, the, if the government, why do you think AA is court ordered? Wait, you, you see, like, think about this. Why do you think it's court ordered? <laughs> You're being punished. You're being punished for your inability to manage your shit. God damn it, dude. Don't you think it makes more sense to put people into a system that helps them outgrow the condition in which makes them choose shitty shit? No, they don't want us healed. They need us broken. They need us broken. So part of that indoctrination is thinking that <clears throat> I relapsed and went 30 days and I relapsed. The definition of a relapse is this. You were medically getting better and then you decided to consume the poison or the substance or the person and now your situation is worse, is worse, is worse. It means that you started, you were doing really well <clears throat> and then there was a relapse and now you're working your way back. It's literally worse than it was before. Think of it like cancer. Hey stranger, what's up? Think of it like cancer. I was going into remission and then there was a, a lapse in that and now the cancer's worse, the cancer's back. That's a relapse. That's an actual, that's the truth. Sometimes people who haven't worked far enough through their sobriety, listen, into and through sobriety isn't the same, right? My situation is now worse, okay? Into sobriety and through sobriety are not the same, okay? So I want you, this is very important, dude. If we don't understand this, then we just, we just, we're just the same person not drinking, okay? Into sobriety, is the length of time that you haven't been drinking. So two months, right? You went two months. You went two months into your sobriety. But did you move through it? Into guarantees nothing. Moving through, full of heart, what's up? Moving through your sobriety means that you're actively growing as a person within that state of sobriety. Sobriety is a practice. Sobriety is a lifestyle. That lifestyle of practicing sobriety is reaching towards happiness, generating peace, disconnecting from the illusion that we've been enslaved and indoctrinated within that makes us want to drink. Into sobriety is how long you've gone. How far through is what you've done within that time. Most people just go into sobriety and do nothing. They do the same things. They go to the same places. They hang out with the same people. They do the same shit. That's why they don't heal. That's why nothing changes. That's why in 40 years, they're still going to identify as an alcoholic, even though they haven't consumed in 40 years. That's because technically they're the same person. They've done nothing more. They, they identify as someone that still struggles with alcohol, even though they haven't consumed it in 40 years. That's banana sandwiches, dude. <laughs> I changed everything and made it worse. <laughs> changed, what do you mean changed everything? If you changed everything, you would have fi figured out what worked. <laughs> do nothing different. Yeah, I'm nine days sober. Fuck yeah, dude, I'm stoked. Nine days is the same as nine years. I think the same way I hate AA. AA is not for everybody. And honestly, man, it, you gotta think about this. If AA is court ordered, and it, it, it's like the, oh shit, it's been a while. <laughs> and it's like one of the most highly recommended, um, you know, alternative or, or options to get sober. Um, you gotta think about the type of people who are gonna be there. Everybody, everybody, every kind of person, every billionaire, every millionaire, every broke as a joke, every, every person you can imagine is gonna be there because they think, or, or the government has somehow facilitated um, that to be like the primary way to do it. So check this out. Let, let me tell you this. You want to know why Beyond Sober isn't global? I'm a, a, be, Beyond Sober will have, have a TV show real soon here. I'll talk about it in a second. Um, I was doing some research and I was looking at SEO. Okay. So if you guys know what SEO is, SEO is search engine optimization. It's all the bells and whistles that you got to do online that make you show up on Google first or on the first page. 
So when people were typing in like sobriety program, Beyond Sober would pop up. So I was doing research and I want you to really think about this. The reason why this isn't like massive, right? Reason why it's not plastered all over the planet. A backlink is a website that has basically linked, like put a link like, hey, this is my name. It goes from their website to your website. That's a backlink. The more backlinks you have, the more you're going to pop up when someone searches blah, 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 you're going to pop up. Do you know how many backlinks Alcoholics Anonymous has? Over 1 billion backlinks. 1 billion backlinks. That means you, every, it doesn't matter how fucking hard you search. AA is always going to show up first. Smart recovery is always going to show up first. They have billions of websites that are linking to them. Those links out there, dude, are just dominating. So to compete with that is nearly impossible. It, it, to make that many links is just insane. You know how many millions of dollars, you know, millions of dollars it takes to, to hold that up. You know what's funny? People get upset that I ha I'm self-funded and I have to keep the website going, keep the programs going. I got to pay for things and all this stuff. And I have a minimal $20 charge to get access to everything I know. When AA makes millions of dollars every single year and people don't like it. Holy crap. Millions, dude. They make so much money, but it's free. It's free for you. They're getting paid, dude. They're getting paid for you to be there, 100%. <laughs> That's also why it doesn't work. Um, you have to want to change, 100%. <laughs> You're the start of another movement from the 20s. <laughs> That's the plan, man. That's what we're doing. Um, 20 to get into your class. Uh, to get into the master class, yeah. So now we've, Beyond Sober has two, well, three options now. Um, the main option is you could unlock the entire program, have all access to everything. Um, for a lifetime, you can go ahead and purchase that one time purchase. You're done. Never have to pay for anything else ever again, or you could subscribe to it. There's so many people that go like, dude, I want the support, but I don't, I, I, I can't afford it. I can't spend that much money. Dude, it's less than the price of a trip to the grocery store to unlock everything for a lifetime. But then they go like, I don't have that. And I say, cool, dude. Well, you got 20 bucks. Cool. Well, subscribe to the website as long as you need it. Drop your 20 jump in the program, meet the people, do the work. If you can get everything done and get all those results in under 30 days, dude, pause your subscription. You don't need it anymore. You're good. You're done. Or if you need to keep it for a few months, what? You spent 60 bucks on something? That's crazy. That's the reality. So beyond sober, it's a $20 charge or you can unlock the whole thing. Now, because of that, because there's so many people going into the program, there's also so many people that want to work with me personally. So that's why I created an application process. So I can pick a very select group of people that are willing to invest in themselves and work with me almost daily on their health, happiness, and sobriety. Yes, in association with the Beyond Sober program. You guys working with me, dude, it's, it's Zoom calls, it's homework, it's accountability, it's follow-up, it is recorded, it's amazing. It's unlike anything that you're going to find anywhere else because... Simply put, nobody knows this information better than I do. It's, it's phenomenal what we've been able to facilitate and the type of results that I've been able to help people get. Um, I'm very proud of that information and that's why I continue to show up. Whether I'm releasing free information on TikTok or I'm creating a membership section or I now have the Beyond Sober blog and the podcast and the YouTube and everything, everything you need is for free. But everything you don't have access to could be the information that changes your life, right? Um, we are powerful, not powerless. Yeah, 100%. A lot of people uh, know the information, uh, but you're awesome. I wish people knew the information. Um, check this out. A lot of people know the information, but don't know how to apply it. This is why I can tell you to do a backflip and you won't do it. <laughs> Try it. Do it. Well, you've never done it before? You know how to do a backflip. You do. You've seen, tell me you've never seen someone do a backflip. You understand how to do a backflip, right? All right, Paul, you know how to do a backflip. All you have to do is stand, right? And you throw your arms back. And then as you throw your arms back, you're gonna jump and then you're gonna tuck because when you tuck, that's gonna, that inertia is gonna flip you over. Okay, go ahead and do a backflip. Y'all wait, right? 
Everybody knows how to do a backflip, but why aren't they doing it? Because they don't know how to apply that information. I can't even do a push up. So think about this. You could do it. You're not going to. You know how, but you won't. Why not? What is the reason why you're not going to do the backflip even though you know exactly how to do it? Risk factor. <laughs> Commitment, right? Lots of things, right? There's so many different reasons why we don't follow through even though we know. As a matter of fact, most of us go like, no, 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 I'm fine where I'm at. But you might be finer over there. <laughs> You'll never know because you won't do the backflip. So <laughs> that's why we let that state of fear guide no arms. It's even easier, man. You got less fucking, less, less, better aerodynamics with no arms. <laughs> so that's the whole thing, man. That's why we curate this information very strategically is you could get this piece of information over there. You're like, oh yeah, that works. And then what's next? Well, I will try this. And then what happens is our attention goes over here and we do this thing for a little while and we kind of get results. Eh, but it's still not completely working. And then you go over here and try this thing and it, it works. It works better than the other one. But then it's over here. And then there's all these pieces that you're not getting that link them all together. There's a reason why it's not working. It's because you are doing it. You, the person, is doing it. You are the reason why it's not working. Until we figure out, and we will, what part of you is stopping you from doing the backflip and understanding the, the mechanics behind doing it, you're always going to stay safe. You're not gonna do anything new. You're not gonna take in any of that information or do any of the new things that's necessary for you to do backflips anywhere, for you to live a life that you don't want to escape. That's the truth with curating content, curating data is it goes from here to here to here to here. That's why Beyond Sober as a masterclass is a step-by-step -step guide for six weeks, man. You get six weeks to change your entire life and most people change theirs in one. One week, you can show up for 30 minutes a day, do some homework, your entire life could be different. <laughs> You've showed up your entire life and done nothing and look where it's gotten you. <laughs> That's pretty harsh, but it's true because I felt that way for so long. I felt like, dude, everything I've done has led me to kill myself and now I have to do something different. And this full circles back to who I was after I survived liver failure. I was the same person I was when I was drinking. So please listen to this. After I got out of the hospital, who was I? I hadn't had alcohol in 11 days and I went through a surgery. I died. I was wheeled out of there. Who was I when I got out of the hospital? I was the same person that couldn't walk, that now has surgery, that now feels like shit, that now has lost everything. I am the exact same person, plus the pain, plus the trauma, plus the new memories, plus the medical bills. That's the problem. This is why most people that go through the struggle just continue struggling. They struggle all the way to death. And I realize that I can't drink because I'll die. That's what the doctor said. Cody, if you drink, you'll die. Okay, well, I can't do that anymore. I don't want to smoke anymore. That gives me too much paranoia and all this stuff. Can't do drugs anymore. I've already damaged my body. I have to do something different, which means I have to try and think new thoughts. I have to practice doing new things. I have to take new actions. Otherwise, I'm gonna go right back to DJing, right back to those people, right back to the alcohol, right back to those feelings, and right back to feeling like the biggest POS on the planet. And I wasn't going to accept that, but I had to struggle through that and go, you know what, dude? How about I just act like a good person? I wonder what that feels like. Not just thinking I am and finding reasons why I'm not that bad, but actually do what good people do, taking care of themselves. Let me take care of me for a little bit. Let me, let me struggle in this place. Let me feel like shit for a bit. And it felt like forever, but it wasn't. That was my perspective. That was my perception. When you're in pain, everything goes by slower. And then I realized that I was really good at using my struggle to do something good for me. Quitter, right? You know, it's, that's the whole thing with quitting, dude. That's the reality with this. The best people on the planet quit shit that doesn't serve them. 
And the toxic masculinity in boys and men, he goes like, you, 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 you don't quit. Every single person you've ever met has quit. And that's probably why most people want to quit you is because you are that person that makes people uncomfortable. They don't want what you have to offer. They quit you. And that's, you think that there's something wrong with quitting something that doesn't serve you? As a matter of fact, it's your obligation to quit being a piece of shit. It's your obligation to do that. Otherwise, you can expect other people to quit around you. The whole point of life is to quit the things that do not move you forward. You're not a quitter because you decided to let go of something that was forcing you to quit things that were even worse. You are stronger because you decided to accept the fact that that wasn't something that was for you. It was actually holding you back. It was actually toxic. And to quit toxic fucking behavior is the greatest super strength you will ever find. But that doesn't make you a quitter, or does it? If quitting something bad for you is good, then what is quitting something good for you? Is that bad? I don't know. But it's up to you to determine what that is. And if you're using the word quitter to attempt to bring other people down, that's a reflection of how many times you fucking failed and are afraid to fail again. Quitter, if it's not working, quit that shit. If you're not quitting, that's the problem. It's okay to let go. It's okay to give up on the things that don't dramatically improve your quality of life. And that's people. I will quit your ass in a fucking heartbeat, dude. As a matter of fact, I have boundaries. I won't even give you the, the time of day to where I have to quit you. I see you from afar. All you have to do is say the word quitter and I realize that you are someone that I'll never need to quit because you're not deserving of my time. That's a boundary. And that's something I'll fight for, not physically, but I will take a stand against those that want to judge people that take care of themselves because only sick human beings attempt to make happy, healthy people feel bad about themselves for doing better than you. That's insane to think about, dude. That's really, that's just bananas. I used to think that way too. I really did. I felt, I believe that. I believe that. Oh, shit, Jim's in the building. What up, baby? So good to see you, bro. Goodness gracious. You got me sweating. <laughs> Misery loves company. I know, man. Quit that miserable shit. Quit it, man. It's okay to be a quitter. You're supposed to be. Quit that shit. Like, you don't have to hang on to everything. Goodness gracious. The, the strongest people I have ever met in my entire life have quit things that don't serve them, that don't move them forward. Quit everything. Once you've lost everything, you're free to do anything. <laughs> demons, quit them demons. <laughs> I'm a first class quitter. Hell yeah, bro. If that's what makes me a happy, healthy person, do call me a quitter all day, every day, man. I'm the biggest quitter there ever is. And I'm happier than anyone that's never quit anything. <laughs> oh, that's just been there. After the checklist, if you do not check all the boxes, you don't belong in my life. Oh, there you go. That's super awesome. I love that. So here's the trip with the checklist and, and a defined regimen like that. The smaller your checklist, the more simplistic your life is. So really think about this. Have you ever relapsed? No. Um, the smaller your checklist, the more simplistic your life is. Because I want you to think about this. Like, look at all these ingredients. You're like, there's like, okay, Sprite, nutrition, check, 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 check. You check at all these boxes, right? Check, check, check. He's good. Oh, did miss that one. Nope, not for me. But if there's only three, four areas that need to be checked before you allow someone in your life, then you actually have a far more simplistic life. That means there's less that can go wrong. <laughs> because you're actually creating, the, remember this, the greater the checklist, the larger the fear. True. So think about this. I just, like, my checklist is very small. you would be a good person doing good things. You gotta love you, man. Because I'm not going to love you harder than you love yourself, right? And you got to want to see other people win. Other than that, you do you, bro. Boop, boop, Do whatever you want to do. If those three areas make sense, that means we're in alignment. That means I have a very small checklist. But if I have 25 things on there, that means there's 25 things that I'm afraid of, that I can't handle, that I think my, I, my life is in jeopardy. My being is in jeopardy. If all 25 of these things aren't on lock, it's okay not to lock down most things. As a matter of fact, that's what trust is. When you trust yourself, 
you allow more things to happen because you don't place your trust in other things and other people. You have trust in yourself knowing that regardless of the circumstances, you got this. <laughs> That's personal growth. With that said, my throat is starting to hurt and I want to be back tomorrow. Thank you so much for 24, almost 25,000 likes, dude. Who knows how many lives you've saved today. Um, thank you so, so much. Eric Wynn, what's up, bro? Hang on, I'm approaching one year and I want to plug Beyonce over my Facebook. Is it okay with you? Dude, get it, baby. Take it, run with it, make it happen, dude. Hell yeah, bro. So a couple of different things. Um, Beyond Sober, I am currently in negotiations with a TV network and Beyond Sober is going to have its own show. Um, it will be Beyond Sobriety and I will be on your smart TV. You guys will be able to access me and all of the other people that I choose to interview and all the different skits and things that we come up with in regards to mental health, sobriety, and a life beyond sobriety. Um, so those negotiations are gonna continue tomorrow. So I think we're shooting for January. The Beyond Sober book should be finished in the next couple months. It's taken only two years to finish this thing. I'm on chapter three, it's 210 pages so far, and I'm adding in all the homework and all that stuff. So it is going to be one of the most powerful guides and workbooks to sobriety on the planet because it's directly taken from inside the program. And so with that said, so many new things are happening. I'm gonna be reaching out to a ton of people. I have so much magic that's unfolding. If we haven't connected already, hit the link in my bio, drop your information right there. I'm not gonna spam you. I just wanna share new details, new fun things, maybe ask you some questions, send you some memes and things to help you get through your day. Um, and also anytime there's somebody new that's coming through or I'm trying to gauge uh, content or a response, I'll reach out to you. Um, also, that's also that's where I send like discounts and opportunities and, and things like that. If there, you have a question, if there's something that you're struggling with and I didn't answer it for you here, on that page with the link in my bio, it says, honestly, is there anything specifically I can do to support you? Feel free to leave your information there. From there, it will land in my inbox and I will send you a video message. And it, you, first you'll get a, a, an auto response from me saying, hey, I got your information, but then there'll be another message directly from me that's answering your questions specifically. That's what I've been doing all day long. Um, also, if you guys feel like I'm the guy, you would like to work with me, you wanna put me on your team, um, there is now an application process. Also with the link in my bio, it says apply here. Drop that information, everything you need is right there. If you or someone you know is struggling and AA and typical sobriety methods aren't working, please consider Beyond Sober. It's literally revolutionary. Worst case, if you guys can just continue supporting me in the way you are, the way you always have, um, I couldn't ask for anything more. You are seriously phenomenal and I can't thank you enough for giving me the space and the platform to help millions of people get better. <laughs> With that, I've got more content coming out here in about two hours and uh, I will see you tomorrow. So do me a favor, just like my mother always says, take care of you. <laughs>